Listen, Laura, I've been wanting to get your perspective on this. Can you sum up for our audience what the Trump team is arguing in their response to last night's blockbuster DOJ brief? Well, one, to answer your question, no. No one thinks Donald Trump is actually writing a memoir, and that's why he has in the possession at Mar-a-Lago documents that ought to have been returned a long time ago. But their argument is simply this. We don't trust you, Department of Justice, to have conducted an investigation that would honor whatever privilege claims we think we have. Whether they're good or not, we think, if you're Trump's team, that we have executive privilege claims and we have attorney-client privilege. <clears throat> Although you had a separate team go in and try to ensure those guardrails were up, we couldn't see those, we don't trust that we want our own person. Their second argument, of course, is that they don't understand why there was any shock by the archives or anyone else that there were classified documents in the boxes that were at Mar-a-Lago because, of course, they're classified. They're presidential records, which makes you scratch your head here, Don, right? Because the whole point of this whole exercise has been you don't have the right to have presidential records, but you're no longer the president of the United States. And so if you're on the one hand admitting that you had them and saying that classified documents were contained in them, you've made part of the Department of Justice's arguments to suggest why you're not supposed to have had any of it. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, this whole thing comes down to this particular motion they're doing right now says they want to have a special master. They don't trust the Department of Justice. And really, what they made the case for is why the archives and DOJ cannot trust them to have returned anything they're supposed to, all of what they're supposed to, or give some reason why they shouldn't have had to. Mm. Nick, let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, what Laura's saying. She's saying that Trump law lawyers, Trump's lawyers are arguing that classified materials should have been, have been expected to be found in those 15 boxes taken from Mar-a-Lago, claiming that it's just the nature of presidential records. Does that argument hold water, especially given the top secret documents at issue here? No, not, of course not. I mean, this is stuff that is national security secrets. Uh, and I think what really um, caused the um, archives to send this over to DOJ for an investigation wasn't just the fact that they were classified documents, but that they were messed in with a lot of other irrelevant documents that just showed that the whole thing was one big mess. And so they were concerned as to what was happening with these documents, who was looking at them, and who had access to them. So it's much more beyond, and, and by the way, the, the papers that the Trump people put in just refer to them as sensitive documents. I mean, they try and downplay mm -hmm. everything uh, in this brief, um, and don't even acknowledge that there are highly classified documents uh, that are at issue with this search warrant. Yeah, they do. Ev they, everything uh, except they were hyperventilating. They had the vapors about uh, expired passports and Time magazine. So, yeah, you're, you're quite right with that, Nick. Uh, Brandon, I, I'm, I'm, it's good to have you back here, and especially because you specialize in this handling the mishandling of classified documents. Trump team is expressing outrage over the photo. We'll put it up now. Uh, the photo that was included in the DOJ filing, calling it gratuitous. Uh, what do you think of that? What's your reaction? So this is, this is what happens when you collect evidence, in, in particular if you're collecting classified evidence. Uh, this isn't an indication of what it looked like. This is an indication trying to demonstrate this is the material that was seized from this particular location. And one of the things that jumps out is, uh, or are, I should say, these what are called cover sheets. Uh, when you have classified documents, they're not just marked top secret or secret, there's a cover sheet. And the point of that cover sheet is to scream at anyone in the room that this material is classified so that you don't trip over it, so that there aren't accidents. And so when you see these cover sheets uh, and, and you learn that there were hundreds of classified documents, uh, it indicates that it would have been difficult to miss this material. I just shouldn't all, I, I mean, shouldn't all of this have gone either in a shredder or be discarded or whatever it is, however it is that they handle it? There, there is a process for this, and that process does not include, you know, it being on a former president's, you know, bedside table or desk or whatever, however it was stored. It should be secured and under government protection. Am I wrong about well, that? Well, it, it, so it, it's not, I would even take it a step beyond that, which is it's not about what should have happened on January 20th with respect to these documents, because I think the point was made earlier. If, if all of these classified documents, and I think we're at over 300 classified documents that were at Mar-a-Lago, 
If they were all returned to the archives uh, in January, we wouldn't be having a discussion about a criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't be having a discussion. It's, so it's not what happened to those documents on January 20th. People do make mistakes. Many cases involving the mishandling of classified information are ultimately not prosecuted. People do make mistakes. It's what happened after that. And, and, and I think that's sort of a key point here. The, the bottom line is it's not that there were classified documents there. It's that uh, at, when there was notice that there were these documents there, mm -hmm. ultimately they remained. Yeah. Laura, the, what's not in here, right, is any mention of, of declassified documents or a response to the government saying that Trump moved documents and tried to obstruct the investigation. Why is that not in there? because there's not really likely a legitimate defense to those notions. They're trying to hone in and be very narrow in their focus in front of this particular judge. Remember, this is, just for the audience's clarification, this is not the same judge who um, you know, signed off on the search warrant. They have to give a different judge the context, the comprehensive information to rule on things that they were asked about, which is the special master. So they're trying to focus on that particular aspect of it as, I think, a bit of a, not a distraction to be nefarious, but their strongest arguments that they have are in favor of why they believe a neutral figure in a case such as this of extraordinary public interest ought to check and make sure that every I was dotted and T was crossed. But I just want to underscore this point that you made and branded as, as well. We should not be here. Right. We should not be here because there should have been the cooperation from a former president to provide documents back to the National Archives. Yes, mistakes have been made. We most notably hear the analogy all the time raised about former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and her retention of documents on a private email server. Guess what the distinction here so far has been? that there was cooperation to provide documentation. The reason we're already here at the point in time we're talking about an execution of a search warrant, where you've got the legal filing suggesting to them that, look, all you were supposed to do here was not have a criminal referral, but you should have gone back to the archives. That would have been standard back and forth. Well, that's not what has happened in the past. It's not what should have to happen at all when we're dealing with documents of this nature. We should never be here. We should never know about this. The story should have ended when the first 15 boxes were returned, and that should have been all of them. Is this, a, is this similar, uh, Laura, when you're talking about the distinction, is it like, is there a presiding judge and then a magistrate that sort of rules on things? Is that how this works? Is that what yeah, well, there's a there's different um, intermediate judges. There's a right. ma magistrate who rules on evidentiary things yep. about whether search warrants should be executed. They normally don't hear trials. The trial judge is usually the federal district judge who will hear the case ultimately. Okay. So, Nick, what about this idea that Trump had an expectation of privacy at his residence, which which is a golf course that's open to members and where he was apparently keeping classified documents? The government wanted back. He was keeping them in his desk. <laughs> Well, that's the whole point of the Fourth Amendment. I mean, there is an expectation of privacy, um, and there is a the amendment, basically, the Fourth Amendment says that you're going to be secure in your home and your possessions, and any searches have to be reasonable. And so to have a reasonable search, the government had to come in, as they did here, and provide probable cause that there was evidence of a crime, a crime had been committed, and evidence of that crime existed at Mar-a-Lago. They certainly did that, um, and the proof is in the pudding and what they came up with and they took. I mean, what the papers that were filed today completely try and downplay the whole business about what occurred uh, in June and then later in terms of turning over other documents and responding to a, a grand jury subpoena. Uh, they try and portray this as just the usual give and take when the archives gets involved with the president who's setting up the papers, uh, and this was basically just giving security advice. I mean, that's how they portray what, in effect, is concealment in a false affidavit that was offered by Trump's own attorney saying that they had done an adequate search and had looked everywhere for all the classified documents. That did not happen. Brandon, before we get out of here, I have to ask you, what do you expect from the DOJ? What, what will they do next? Uh, they're going to do what they've continued to do. In fact, really, the special master here, it, it, it's a bit of a distraction. The special master, uh, at most, is going to potentially withhold some uh, small amount of, of documents or, or delay it. Like, the investigation is ongoing. And what the Department of Justice, now there's sort of two threads. One is being led by the Justice Department and FBI, where they're determining what happened and why. They're determining why these classified documents were taken to Mar-a-Lago, why they weren't all uh, provided 
uh, returned to the archives, why they weren't uh, provided when there was a subpoena, why there were representations made on June, th June 3rd that ultimately turned out to be false. Uh, there's also what the intelligence community is doing, and it's not just to determine what potential risks there were to national security and how to mitigate those risks. They are doing a classification re review. Are, are these documents actually still classified? That's relevant to potential charges. They're fingerprinting these documents. They're trying to determine, can they determine who accessed them? That is relevant to potential ch criminal charges. Yeah. They're also building a timeline to understand why these documents in particular were in the possession of the president. And so they're going through all of that information. And they're also, if we advance, if the investigation advances, what the Justice Department would be doing is determining, can any of these documents actually be shown to a jury? Can we use these in trial? So there's still a lot of work to be done.